we have here a collection of, I think, some of the best gossip and entertainment columnists in North America. Here, here. Are, are, do you think, <laughs> as a film critic, are these, are these the good ones we have here today? Well, I've always felt that a good gossip columnist is a contradiction in terms. I think it, it's one of the most staggeringly irrelevant professions on the planet, even more irrelevant than mine. Um, That's going some. That is going some, <laughs> I know, I know. But I, I just, I, I'm listening, and they're very funny, and they're very entertaining. At least and we write about other people. You write about yourself. You know what you think. We write about other people. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to take a break here, but we'll criticize. be back more after this. I feel getting on this. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and those who don't. Now, oh, I see. You know, I'll have thing. them encased in bronze. But anyway, I want I want to talk to John for a moment. These, uh, you talked about Hedda Hopper and Luella, Luella Parsons. These were the real, these were the doyens of gossip. And I think that, you know, one got the impression that they could actually destroy people with, you know, the flick of a pen. Well, the thing to remember about the, the, the Golden Age gossip columnists was that they were very much creatures of the studio apparatus and for the papers, the papers they worked for. Um, what got to them was what got out, generally, of the studios. And what the, where the gossip column was really powerful in Hollywood was people who could read them and find out who was in and out at the various studios just by the kind of item. So-and-so is up, so-and-so is down. But, I, I mean, the people today have much more independence. And also, though, there's, there's a much greater flow of information because the studio publicity systems no longer exist. The Rob Lowe case, for example. Now, if, if that had gotten out 50 years ago, of course, his career would have been destroyed. But more likely than not, it would not have gotten out. The, 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 the girl would have been bought off. The film would have been destroyed. Um, and Rob Lowe now goes, and now he talks about the fact that he's addicted to sex. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and that it's a real serious problem for him. And then yeah. he gets, then, then there's an element of sympathy. This uh, is yeah. a problem for us because everyone's. What, that everything. you're addicted to so sex? So we have, uh, no, we have nothing to talk about, you know? <laughs> everyone tells everything today, which I personally feel is appalling. And I don't know why these people tell us some of the things they tell us frankly, but nothing, you mean nothing, they go, nothing they, is too terrible to tell anymore. So well, we have nothing to tell that's if really you're true. over it. Once you, you know, I, once you admit your addiction to, to sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever, alcohol. you become therapeutic. It's like a therapeutic kind of pornography. Okay, what but is the one, mean, just say, what is the, the one, la the taboo, the final taboo? What won't movie stars admit? Homosexuality. Still, huh? Mm. Why, why is that? Not being that? hired for enough movies. <laughs> is that it? That, that if they say they're gay, that's the end of their careers? Mm, it, it's the end of any kind of... Uh, if, if someone who is, is a sex symbol came out, absolutely. I mean, if Tom Cruise turned out to be gay, I mean, there's no evidence that he is, and he's married and everything, I, so I, I assume he's not. Uh, but if he it came oh, out that he were, that. or if, it, Tom, <laughs> if it came out that Tom Selleck were, were gay... It's still an open question as to how it would affect the box office, because we didn't learn about rock until after, and there are a lot of stars that you know are, but you yeah. just, you're not going to write it. Well, what but about, what nobody about knows stars? whether if... Hmm? What about rock stars? Like, there have always been rumors about Whitney Houston. Rock stars can Whitney do anything. Houston, for example. It's different for rock yeah. stars, oh, yeah. right? They can be... I mean, when you attend some of these uh, important social events, has anything exciting ever happened? Oh, well, certainly, because usually they're very highly charged evenings you know the ladies have put a lot into the event in the evening and uh, people drink and the usual happens you get jealousy for instance at the, the last Brazilian ball one very irate husband walked up to a well-known consul general who fancies himself uh, a ladies man and soundly smacked him right across the face uh, because he felt that he was paying too much attention to his wife so that type of thing does happen my question is for anyone on the panel are the celebrities that are portrayed as really rude by the media, such as Andrew Dice Clay and Two Live Crew, do you find them as obnoxious in person, or is that just a gimmick? Oh, no, they're more obnoxious. <laughs> they're, 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 they're much more obnoxious. Actually, it is a gimmick. It is a gimmick for them to make money and to get the attention, and, and often it works. But it doesn't work for long, like the case with Andrew the, Dice Clay. The people who are generally celebrities are rude to or rude to them are really the photographers not the writers seriously because a lot of these people are chased by the paparazzi to the point of being very obnoxious and that's where you get the stories about breaking cameras and yelling obscenities and that's who's rude that's that, that's the situation now there's a rap singer by the name of they call themselves rap artists i think uh, mc hammer mc mm -hmm. yeah so uh, who was it was it you tom who knew, knows a little story about mc hammer 
Well, I heard a story that he... Oh, it was you heard a story. Surely, what's the MC Hammer story? Yeah, what happened with that MC Hammer thing? I read about it somewhere. Now, I don't know. Vanilla Ice? It's you, Tom. No, what, what, what did what did I know? But then he drinks. Doesn't he do all these? Oh, I know which I know which, which story movie. Yes, he does the commercials. <laughs> Sorry, Cheryl. Uh, he does these I'm commercials. I'm feeding you the he these, to Tommy. Give it a rest. He does these commercials for uh, for Pepsi Cola. And in his room in New York, uh, when the chambermaid uh, went through it, they found all kinds of chicken. They had some chicken feet and uh, Coca Cola. He drinks oh, Coke. Oh, when you're paid oh, millions of dollars. Oh, if, if, if you, oh my you God, if you were the president of Pepsi-Cola and giving him $5 million, you'd be very upset about it. Do you go and talk to the chambermaid? Do you go through the garbage? Do you do what? Oh, no, no, no. The please. I have a staff of assistants who specialize in garbage. That's why he's grown his hair. He disguises himself. <laughs> okay, what, what lengths would you go to as, as, about as here. a gossip? Tommy, <laughs> goes, the Tommy goes to the Academy Awards and goes through the kitchen to get to the governor's party, carries a tray, that's right. puts on a bow tie, goes as a waiter. He gets in, and though, that's how I got into works. the governor's ball at the, at the Academy Awards. And I'm proud to say I, I served a shrimp cocktail to, to Betty Davis. It's <laughs> true. That's why he's on the panel. But she didn't, she didn't want yeah, shrimp Betty cocktail. That, the, problem was she didn't, she, the problem was she said, I don't want shrimp cocktail. And that's what she told the waiter before. So... So you kind of angry at me, but still, it's John, the memory. John, you're sitting here smiling. Are you, I, is this going through your head? <laughs> These people have lost their cl real clout, the, you know, that goes, that gossip columnists used to have. I don't know um, what, if, 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 I think we're a far less shockable society today. I mean, if, if say, what had happened with, with you know, the, the equivalent of the Rob Lowe case 50 years ago was something like Fatty Arbuckle and being accused of rape and murder, uh, and the paper, the gossip columns, literally destroyed him. Everybody remembers the scandal. Nobody remembers that he was acquitted three times and completely exonerated of the charges. And, but he, that was the end of his career? That was the end of his career as an actor, and he just signed a real big contract. He ended up directing under a pseudonym. Ironically, Will Be Good was his pseudonym as a director. <laughs> hey, I, was wonder, oh, Whoops, I was wondering if any of you have ever been physically 